Hey guys, as you can see, after the last video, I am indeed still alive, but it was a close one. So here's what happened. I went to answer the door and I see this creepy looking little girl standing there with like some boxes of cookies. So I did what everyone else would have done. I screamed, took her cookies and slammed the door. Mmm, ghost cookies are good. But anyway, close call for me and hopefully all you guys are okay as well. So comment below if uh, the white death actually got you. Wait. So you wouldn't be able to comment if she actually got you. You know what? You guys are really creative. I think you'll think of something. Just don't haunt me. Today is a very special day because today we celebrate a monumental event from one of my favorite movies of all time. We're descending toward Hill Valley, California at 4.29 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. Back to the Future 2. So like that poster right there, right, right there. Except for, you know, the sequel, which is much better than that right there. I have always thought Back to the Future 2 was the best in the trilogies because it gave us a glimpse into the future. And if you don't know, today, October 21st, 2015, is the day Marty McFly went to the future with Doc and saw all those amazing things like flying cars and weird looking Pepsi bottles. So I've compiled a list of all the things Back to the Future actually got right about the future, or, you know, now. Number one, 3D movies, especially shark-related 3D movies. We love 3D so much, we even brought it into our living rooms with 3D television, which I really never understood because, first of all, there are a limited number of 3D glasses, so you can't really have too many people over for movie nights. Also, why would you want to bring that post-3D movie headache to your house? Nevertheless, everything nowadays seems to be in 3D, and uh, although we didn't make Jaws 19, we did make Sharknado, so close enough. Number two, tablets. Before ideas for Microsoft Surface and the iPad Pro came out, there was Robert Zemeckis who created this guy in his little tablet. This thing looks a bit clunky but fits the bill of a tablet. It's handheld, electronic, wireless, and he probably also has Angry Birds on it. Number three, drones. When Griff was being arrested, we all saw that uh, USA Today sent out a camera drone. Besides again looking a bit clunkier than drones nowadays, the movie has accurately predicted that many media companies and even everyday people now have used drones to take footage of news events and basically everything else. Number four, big screen wall mounted televisions and video conferencing. Although video conferencing is so common nowadays, anyone with a smartphone can do it. But keep in mind, video phones, though long promised, barely existed in 1989. Also, most TVs of the 1980s were heavy and basically a massive cube. Some of them were even built into furniture. To the young viewers out there, just be glad you never had to help a friend move their massive two-ton low-quality television set. Number five, hands-free video games. In the movie, two young boys mocked Marty for playing a video game which needed him to use his hands, describing it as being like a baby's toy. And if you were me and actually saw this movie as a kid when it first came out, your mind was blown and was immediately filled with the possibilities of video games of the future where hands were not needed. But back then it was more like, oh wow, wouldn't it be really cool to shoot ducks on Duck Hunt without actually using that gun, you know, with the whole wire attached to it? Number six, flying cars. Okay, we are definitely not at a point where flying Flying cars are commonplace, but technically we do have them. Terrafugia unveiled a prototype which they claimed could do more than 400 miles in one trip. But the thing is, this thing still needs roads. Number seven, multiple TV channels. When I first saw this scene in the movie, I thought it was the coolest thing because I remember all we had back then was picture in picture and that was already pretty awesome. And now not only can we watch multiple things on the same screen, we can watch things across multiple devices. Number eight, fingerprint recognition. In the film, a payment can be made just by the touch of a fingerprint. It is also used to open doors. This is of course now possible and very widely used. Thumbprint security systems also now exist. But I've always had a problem with with uh, security systems 
that utilize uh, one of our body parts because if you've seen Demolition Man, you know what gruesome scene I'm talking about. I mean, some people are crazy, so I'd rather they take my money than maybe cut off my thumb. Number nine, virtual reality headsets. Marty McFly's kid, who's also called Marty McFly, had on a bulky pair of sunglasses he could use to answer and talk on the phone. Google Glass can now do exactly that and more, and it became available to the public right before Marty's arrival. Number 10, restaurants without waiters. Did you notice at the cafe Marty went into, there were no waiters and uh, Ronald Reagan brought him a Pepsi and Michael Jackson was reading off specials? But now many restaurants have tabletop tablets where you can order without having to interact with a person at all. Isn't that great? Also, in case you missed it, go watch my video on how machines will take over the world. Number 11, the Cubs and Miami. Wow, this could actually happen, but uh, as I'm about to wrap up this video, the Cubs just dropped game three and are now in a 0-3 hole. So unless they're the 2004 Red Sox, a comeback is not likely. So perhaps the movie will get that wrong, but what it did get right is that Miami did get a baseball team two years after the movie was made. And they weren't called the Miami Marlins until 2001. So that's a really good prediction right there. And finally, number 12. Great level four, please. Voice command. Hey, Suri. <laughs> Sorry, had to do it. Uh, did I mess anyone up? Anyway, I've always had a huge problem with this scene and it has nothing to do with the voice activated pizza hydrator with a weird fruit bowl that comes when you call it. My problem is that there are six people at dinner and only one pizza. I mean, how does that even work? Unless she had more pizza in her purse because they are really small. Also, I always wonder what would happen if someone actually ate a dehydrated pizza. Would it be something like this? Anyway, I loved this movie, and uh, is anyone else really bummed the whole super accurate weather forecasting thing is not even close to becoming a reality right now? Also, be really cool to have a real hoverboard and actual flying cars. You know, if flying cars did get invented and I bought one, the first thing I'm gonna do is get in one and say the words, Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And sorry, this video came out at a very awkward time, but uh, I really wanted to be released the day or actually the hour that it turns uh, October 21st, 2015. Well, at least in New York. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you haven't done it, please subscribe to this channel. Follow me on social media, all that good stuff. See you later.